Hi, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you around this Auto Trail Tracker FV handover. So the first thing you want to do once you arrive at site is hook the vehicle up. So this is the hook point here, so if you grab your hook up lead, lift the collar on the hook up lead, lift the flap on the vehicle and push on until you hear a positive click. And then to unhook there is a small blue lever beside, if you push that down and you'll be able to pull the hook up lead off the van. Always hook the van up first and the sight as we don't want you walking around with a live lead should it be wet or should your lead be broken in any way we don't want you getting an electric shock. We've got a locker here which is underneath your bench seats. So you've got some good storage there which just opens with the all your external lockers opens with the little key here so you can lock them. So and then below you've got your waste water so this is all the water you've used your shower room water your dishes water your hand basin water so you'd normally drive over a grid on the going leaving the site called the motorhome service bay and you'd normally um, ditch it into a hole in the ground a grate or a gully on smaller sites it might just be a hole in the ground but to open just you've got a lever on the side and you'll be able to drop your fresh water, your waste water. You'll not want to travel with the, with waste with waste water on board. So if you are leaving the site, just get your water before you leave, as this will add more weight to the vehicle and, and it will take more fuel on the consumption. We've got another locker here, so this is great. Some more storage for you for your various items and you do have your external shower so you have a trigger going on one side and then you'll have a bullfinch fitting on the other which pushes into there and then you can go from off to cold or to hot to your desired temperature this is great for the bikes the boots the dogs the kids make sure the pump's on the side on the control panel and you'll be able to get pressure out here on your external shower Here are your two fresh water drains, so these are your travel drains, so to empty your fresh water, so in the winter time or when you're leaving site and you're going home and you might not want to travel with any water on board, open both because one will give you 50% and the other will give you another 50%, so you've got to open both to drain the full tank, so it's 50-50 which obviously will equal 100 and that is the tank drained completely. This is your toilet, so that's where you do the biz. This is where the business ends up. And open, it opens with this little key again. And you can push in there. Make sure the slide on the interior of the, on the bottom of the toilet is closed. You'll be able to lift the orange handle and slide it off. You've then got wheels to drag it around the site when it's full instead of having it if it's heavy and empty, take the cap off, press the button, go to your waste disposal point which is normally beside or behind the toilet block and empty it out. Once you've emptied it out there's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a slosh around and tip out again, it'll just get any, um, it'll just give it a better clean, and get any muck that's stuck out and then should you be using the liquids, a cap full of liquid into here and you'll be able to ready you'll be ready to put it straight back in the van it's ready to use but should you be using the tablet form which are like dishwasher tablets in a cellophane you put a pint of water in once you've cleaned it and drop one straight down the toilet and it will degrade into the liquid you will get an indication on the toilet when the cassette is full and requires to be emptied but i'll show you that once we're inside the vehicle and at the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and then your reverse camera built in just underneath and then you've got a spare wheel behind this cover so put this key that comes on your lockers, put it in here, give that a turn that cover will then lift off and there's a big nut behind there you will be able to twist the nut until this big acrylic cover lifts off and then your full size spare wheel is behind there coming on to the passenger side of the vehicle this is your storage underneath your bed. So 
underneath here you have your hooker blade, your carpets. This is just an, a waste water extension pipe. So this will clip onto the waste. Should you not be able to get as close to the gully or grate, you'll be able to clip that on and then take the other end and put it into the uh, hole in the ground or the grate. You've got your on and winding handle and rafter bar. The fridge vent covers which go on your fr fridge vent from behind in the, the winter time. But the main thing is this. So your boilers just behind here, this holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter time, you don't want that 10 litres of water to freeze in the boiler on board, as it can break the boiler and it's quite expensive to replace and it's down to you to drain the vehicle so it's not covered under warranty. So if you lift this, you'll see the water cascading underneath the van. Leave that in the position and let that 10 litres of water drain directly underneath the van. And when you do winterize, leave it up, then open all the mixer taps into the middle position. This stops any air from building up and giving you any air locks. Take the shower head off and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray. This stops any water from freezing in the shower hose. And then when you do come to reuse the vehicle, put it down at that position, fill the vehicle with water like I'll show you in a moment. And then you'll be able to go to the, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the taps first and it'll automatically give you cold. Go to the hot side on your mixer tap and it'll cough, sprit, and make all sorts of noises until you get a steady flow on one side. of On that tap, you would go to the other tap and then you, your system is primed for the season. You've also got your a plug there, so should you need any power in your awning, you've got a plug there, so if you just lift this um, locker, you'll have access to a three pin plug when hooked up. This is where you fill your fresh water, so I would advise you go and buy yourself a hose pipe and some hose fittings, as it's just a brass tap on most sites. Put the hose in there, and if you are on site, fill it until it overflows or fill it until you see the levels on the control panel. If you are traveling um, to a site and you want to travel with a bit of water, tend to travel with a maximum of 20 liters because this will give you the uh, benefit of stopping and using the toilet or um, having a cup of tea on board. But if you are going while camping, off, you will have to take a full tank of water with you as there'll be nowhere to get water once you're out off grid. You can see on board the levels in, in increments, so it'll go 15, 25, 50, 75, and 100 litres of water on board. Next to it, you've got your external gas point, so you'll have a bullfinch connection again, which clips in there. It's normally a red connector. You'll need a Jubilee clip and some orange gas hose to clip the connector onto the hose, and then you'll need a jubilee clip to connect it onto your kadak or external barbecue next week you've got your trim event so you don't need to do anything with that no cover needs to come off it does its own thing and it allows the fumes out of your boiler you've got your fridge vent covers which them covers lift off so there's two tabs in the top corner which will slide forward and then them covers slide behind and then you'll be able to lock them shut these are only in the winter so you can use the fridge when these are on um, as it protects the element but you'll probably only need these on from about October to March time and then operate your, your habitation door it is just on the centre locking so you lock all the doors or you press the button and the step will come out and that means your habitation door is locked but you can open it manually should you require and of course you have your Fiamma with the locks and then that's just adding extra security should the vehicle be standing in storage or parked on the drive coming further down you've got your gas locker LPG liquid petroleum gas so if you just open you Your, and then in here you've got two gas bottles, so these are two six kilogram gas bottles, you can get bigger ones in there, so you'll probably be able to get 11 and a six in there. And then to connect the gas bottle to the van, you've got a pigtail. So what you need to do is, it's a no need for a spanner, it's a left hand thread, hand tighten. 
turn on at the top of the bottle do one full turn when you turn it on and that'll give gas into the van but this is better than turning the bottle on all the way because should you have to isolate it in an emergency or a fire it's far easier to come in here and just do one turn and it's off but then you've got a little green button here so should you be get should you once you turn the bottle on if you just press that for three seconds push that in there's a crash valve in here in your regulator and it'll allow the gas from the bottle to go on board always hook the always strap the, the gas bottles on board and then when you are traveling turn the gas off diesel on here opens with the main ignition key put that in and you'll be able to access your diesel and then on the slam panel of the passenger door you've got your tire pressure so five and a half bar front and back which is equivalent to 79.5 psi all round and underneath your seat you do have your toolkit so this will just slide out and it'll give you everything to change your wheels so a jack and a brace a tow eye and a screwdriver and with it being a fade, on a fade to cattle your engine battery is underneath the floor so should you ever need to change it um, or gain access to the battery itself you do so through the floor but there is a jumping point underneath the bonnet and your bonnet release is just on the passenger side dashboard lifts up you do have your weights so or your weights here so your gross vehicle weights 3650 if you were to put a trailer on and tow anything you could your train weight is 4.9 ton and then you've got your front and back axle weights your paint codes down here and then you've got your various fluids so you've got your brake fluid your radiator fluid you lift this off and you fill your radiator fluid and your um, power steering fluid which is here and then in the corner the main one you're going to need when out on the road is your screen wash you've got your oil filler here and dipstick down there for checking your levels before you go, go on your trips you've got your earth for your jump start or charger and then if you put your key into here and lift this flap off you then have your positive for a charger or your jump leads for giving or receiving a jump start once on board the vehicle this is your main 12 volt control panel so to put power on you've got the on button in the top corner there so if you just click that you then have four other buttons so you've got your pump so this surface is your tap in the kitchen the hand basin your toilet shower and your exterior shower so you must have that on when you are wanting to use water you've got this transfer button here which i wouldn't put on as this will change change the motorhome battery to the engine battery which means you would then be running the motorhome off the engine battery and i wouldn't advise that as it'll flatten the battery on the fade side and then you would require um, either a jump start or someone coming to rescue you you've got your awning lights here so this is the light on the outside of the vehicle and then this is if you scroll through so that is the make of your control panel you've got your event timer so you can if you can put a timer on so you can set your timer like so you can set an alarm so should you be catching a ferry this will start beeping at this time to wake you up so that's how you would set it by going into it there change your time so you go in and change the time which is displayed on the control panel your tank heat has to turn them on press there so if it was going to be a cold night and um, in the winter time you can put your tank heaters on and this puts power through your puts a current through your water to stop it freezing your external temperature your solar which is the current coming in the vehicle which is zero because we're hooked up at the moment and that takes the that is the bigger voltage coming on board so then the solar will go to sleep you've got the uh, the current coming off the leisure battery your waste water is empty and your fresh water is 75 percent full your vehicle battery is 14.4 volts and your leisure battery is 14.4 volts and then moving across to your Truma Combi um, display 
So to press and wait this panel up, if it's off, just press and hold until you get that screen and then enter, press OK. So you've got your van with the thermometer in, this is the temperature, so you can go all the way to 30 degrees, all the way to off. So for this we'll just say 25 and then you press the wheel once and then this is preset the heating to 25 degrees. Moving along you've got the thermometer and the water which is your water so you've got off so if it, you didn't have any water on board don't put the water on because you'll just fry the element out in the boiler. You've got 40 or you've got 60 um, degrees of water or you've got boost which will prioritise your water to your heating. So for this we'll just say 60 degrees of water. Press that's preset your water to 60 degrees and then moving along you've got your gas bottle and electricity so this is a source you are using off so if you are wild camping you would just have to use gas on its own so this would be heating your van on gas and your water you've got a mix one which is a one kilowatt of electric and gas you've got mix two which is two kilowatts of electric and gas which you'd normally use in the winter should you want to um, give your heating a boost and boost the van heat up time and water and then if you are on a smaller site you'd use electric one which is electric on one kilowatt or you can use electric on two so if you've paid your site fees and you're on a camping and caravan and site in the UK you can use two kilowatts of electric and you wouldn't want to waste your gas moving along you've got your fan so this is a 12 volt assisted fan so you'd use eco if you were while camping as this um, doesn't take a higher source of 12 volt or you've got high which will blow it around the van so eco will still blow it around the van but it'll do it very um on a lower source of 12 volt whereas this will use a take 12 volt source and blow it around the van so you'd normally use high when you were hooked up coming down the bottom You've got a timer here so you can t time the heating to come on and off once. So if you are getting up at six, at 7 o'clock in the morning, you might want the heating to come on at 6. You can set that. You've got the clock that displays on here, the time. And then should you get a warning triangle here, which means something's failed, you can go to the spanner in the corner there and turn it down to reset and press and hold and it will reset your boiler. To operate your Dometic fridge, so if you press and hold the on button, this will then power the fridge up. So it's automatically gone to A, which is automatic, so it knows what source to choose. And it's chose hook up, which is 240 volts, as we are hooked up now. If I was then to take the hook about, it will change over to gas, as it will detect that the gas is open. Or if I was to start the engine, it would go to the 12 volt setting, which is just to keep cool setting. But you can manually override, so you've got manual on mains electric manual on the battery which is displaying a code 6 error because the engine is not running or you've got manual on gas and you'll hear it, it trying to ignite there but on automatic the fridge is pro is is programmed to wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas this is solely because if you were to pull into a petrol station or a filling station the last thing you want to do is for your fridge to spark and ignite as if there is fumes from petrol you don't you wouldn't want to set a set of fire or an explosion next you've got your temperature here so one bar being warm cooler 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 and then you do have a a setting here which will put a bit of heat around the rubber and stops the rubber from perishing to the door when the fridge freezer box is on but when I said about the the battery so the idea here is that you you cool the fridge before you go away either on gas or electric so if you are keeping this at home or you're keeping it on a storage site with hookup you would cool it on electric the day before Give it to, and then go off in the car, bring your shopping in, fill your fridge and your freezer with your shopping, allow that to get cool overnight and then when you are ready to set off, either come manually to put it on the battery or automatic, it'll automatically switch it to the battery and then as long as you're travelling, the fridge and the free, freezer, the, top, the temperature won't 
decrease but it won't increase so it'll just keep it basically it's like a cool box it'll keep it nice and steady for when you are traveling so when you get to your destination your shopping is still fresh also when you are not using the fridge so you've cleaned your fridge out you've, you've bought one of them air fresheners to put in your fridge to stop any smells if you lift your your handle for your fridge up you catch and you've got a small little lever here on both so on fridge and on freezer box these little grey catches and if you just slot them under there that means that it allows an air circulation in the fridge and out to stop any mold or bacteria growing if the fridge door was to be shut because it's trapping the air this is allowing the air to ventilate the fold away table is stored beside the fridge so you would just slide that out and it's basically just like an ironing board leg so you just pull the two legs until it clicks and then you would push the levers in from the legs to fold the legs back on themselves so in the kitchen area you have three gas burner rings so three gas rings and one electric hot plate which will indicate red once once it's on and this only works when you are on mains electric and then you do have your grill so once you do light the grill you will have to hold it for about three seconds to allow the thermal couple to get warm before releasing and then it will stay lit but a tip is to take your oven shelf and your grill pan out when traveling or wrap them up as these can be the cause of your rattles when driving and then in your oven you've got a light here and you've also got your, your oven there so move this shelf like I said to give you a, a rattle on the road and then below so if you push this it'll open the catch underneath the cooker and you do have your socket for your hot plate here so should you have to isolate your hot plate you can unplug the so socket there the plug and you've got your gas taps so all these red gas taps if there is a problem with gas isolate it at the bottle and um, but you can isolate each individual appliance but these are mainly for when the van is habitation serviced a technician will test that the gas is working as it should be you've got your microwave so the work your microwave it's only on when hooked up so only 240 volt microwave press e go and it'll wake up and then it, you can operate it just like a household microwave so this is 800 watt and then you have your you've got your drainer or your chopping board or your sink cover whatever you want so you can cover your sink like so or you can cover your drainer or you can use it as a chopping board give you a bit of extra um, space when cooking but when you're traveling you can store this away in here just underneath the microwave you've got your plug for your microwave should you ever need to replace it or isolate it you've got your bowls and your and your cup racks there and then underneath your sink you've got your cutlery drawer and some storage and then, like we've had the hot water on, you'll get the you'll get lovely hot water. That water's getting lovely and warm there. In the kitchen area, I've got a dimmer switch here, so if you press and hold, it'll dim the light underneath your lounge set ease on both sides or you can just press it and it'll turn it on and then you do have your light for your kitchen just behind your splashback and you do have a three pin plug for your kettle toaster only when you're done in the cupboards you've got your aerial so this is your tv aerial so when you're traveling make sure that you loosen the nut off and you pull it in um, as close into the vehicle as you can like so like it is now and then once you are on site you can push it up and you can turn the toggle here to rotate the aerial 
um, to find the best signal. But the tip is to just look where the other motorhome and caravans are pointing. And then on the Vision Plus booster here, you do have a little little booster, so you can boost from minimum to maximum should you be struggling to get a signal. And then in here, this has been fitted with a solar panel. So you've got your meter here, which will show you your voltage and your battery levels. And then you've got your regulator here, which is saying it's green, it's charging two batteries. But if you click here, it'll display different numbers and this will change the voltage going to the batteries so if it was standing you can change it over so the engine battery gets more charge or you can change it so at the minute it's 50 50 you can change it to 70 30 and then in the front locker above the driver's seat just behind the driver's seat you've got your sergeant power supply unit so you've got all your switches here these need to be on so you charge your space heater or your water heater especially these two otherwise they'll get a warning triangle so just leave these on these will only work when hooked up anyway and you've got all your trips so should your kettle or your hairdryer trip the van try here first before you try the post or the site and then you've got all your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to go and get some 12 volt fuses they all are listed here and just carry some just in case a fuse does blow you can just swap it out and then this is just another this is just a mimic of your control panel so just use the control panel but you can turn different appliances off here and then your build number so your build number from when your vehicle was built at auto trail so should you need any parts or anything if you quote this number and then we'll quote it at auto trail or whoever you get your parts off will know when the vehicle was built and what it is and what part is required for your vehicle and you have your system shut down button here so in the winter you can sh system shut down and it will stop any power drain now in your bathroom so you've got your fedford cassette toilet so to operate the toilet you've got a button here this is your flush but you've also got a fan so your fans automatically kicked in there to stop the fan press it and until it goes to a solid light of a fan and that's the fan off when it's flashing that means it's on so if you press the blink button you'll be able to flush the toilet like so and then you've got your slide or your trap door on here so if you t push that to the right it'll deposit your waste into the cassette below so if that's open like it is now that cassette won't be able to come out the exterior of the vehicle so it must be closed to get the cassette out like i was saying earlier and then this will go red and indicate when it needs to be taken out the vehicle emptied cleaned and replenished with liquid your bathroom lights also on side on the side of your toilet cupboard you've got cupboard for all your toiletries and the cupboard underneath the sink for more toiletries and then in your shower area you've got a, a rail there so this is for your towels but it's also a good place to hang coats or anything that if you have any clothing if you've been caught in the rain and allow it to drip dry in here because this is the smallest place in the van and with the heating on it gets lovely and warm in your bedroom area you have got a socket for a for a TV um, aerial and your 12 volt and a mains three pin plug so should you want a TV in here you can mount your bracket on there and or on here and um, connect to the aerial and 12 volt on the vehicle. So underneath your driver's side bunk at the front and if you lift the carpet your leisure battery lives underneath that floor there so if you lift the, the cover here you'll get access to the the leisure battery should you want to change it and you've got your main battery fuse popping out there and then to make your bed if you just pull this thing here so these are both meet and to get rid of this boom arm table if you just loosen it underneath and then you can push it so that you've pushed the bench worktop over tighten and stand up behind the driver's the passenger seat slide them both together and put the backrests into the middle but what we would advise is you turn the cushions the opposite way and you get the flat side because it's a lot flat 
and nice to sleep on and you can put a sheet on without having the bull nose of the cushion. Operate your TV, so if you just fold it down, so on the latch, which is your travel catch, and then you do have a switch here, so as long as it's on, you'll get the light on the magic eye and you'll be able to turn the telly on until it goes blue, like so. And then if you press AQT, which is this big red but red orange button here, and you'll be able to do a press and hold, you'll be able to get a do an auto tune so automatically set automatically set to the UK, press OK, and let it do an auto tune and find as many channels as it can in your area. If not, you've got source and you can change it to DVD and put a DVD in the side there and this TV is ready so should you ever get a satellite fitted to the van this will take its a satellite in your cab so to the right of the driver is your handbrake which is just down the right hand side you've got your electric windows driver and passenger and then you do have your electric mirror adjustment so you've got your top and your blind spot on each side and you just move the joystick to whichever mirror you want to rearrange you've got your cab side blinds so you just pinch them together and slide the bottom out and then you have the same on the windscreen so they just slide and they're just a magnetic clip on both so they would just clip together on a magnetic strip you've got your headlight adjustments and rear fogs wipers and your trip computer on here which will go through the screen in the middle tell you your range tell you your, dis your trip distance tell you your overall consumption tell you your instant consumption tell you average speed and your, and your traveling time and you've got trip A and B. You've got all your steering wheel controls here on the on the wheel. Your indicators and your lights. Six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar and up for reverse. Which will then bring your rear view camera on. So this is just when in reverse. You've got your traction control here. So if you ever wanted to turn your traction control off you just press here. Um, hill descent control, but you don't really need this with it being a manual. They're mainly for automatics hazards. Locks all the doors, including the habitation door and your heated mirrors there. When it when this locks the doors, it'll also take the step in. You've got your temperature here on the outside, fan speed on the in. Must be on at least one or more for the fan speed to work. One or more for aircon with the fan speed. You've got your distribution, so where you want the air to go to, and either recirculating the air within the vehicle or bringing fresh air in. And then on your radio, so your head unit there, you've got your radio, so FM, AM, you can press one. You've got three here, but if you press all, you've got 12, so you can do all your presets for your radio channels. You've got your media, which is either CD, or you've got USB and auxiliary in there, and this can be Bluetooth audio as well. You've got your navigation, so you can navigate to um, I would never set the home bit up, as if somebody steals your vehicle, they've then got your home address so put the street next to it or the estate or somewhere you know where you can navigate to but never put your home address into the sat nav but if you did want to um, put a new destination in it would just be addresses and then you would put in where you wanted to go and if you are going to a, um, a previous address you've got your recent event, uh, destinations there where you can go back in and select the address you are returning to You've got your phone, so if you go on your phone, you would then go on to settings in the corner, add device, it'll ask you to find Uconnect on your smartphone device, 
and make sure the pins match and then it will then ask you if you would like to pair your contacts press yes and all your contacts so your phone book will be automatically downloaded onto the van so should whoever ring it will come up with whoever is ringing and let you know instead of just a number and then if you go to more you've got a clock a compass and a and your trips on here which you can go through you've got your glove box and you've also got your top box there which is um, air conditioned and heated by the um, temperature on the van so with the aircon and the um, heating system on the van that will heat this and cool this box so especially if you're cooling it you could keep your um, sweets and chocolate and little, little small bottles of water are in, in there for the road instead of going to the fridge and then you've got these lights here which will only work when off the main control panel at the back when stationary but you do have your map lights here on the cab